Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is our SPE's Data Science and Engineering Analytics uh, Technical Section recorded seminar. Uh, we are very privileged to have two very distinguished speakers today, and they're very well known to SPE. So we have Dr. Silvio Levescu and Dr. Birol Dinderuk. And before I introduce, let me just say a quick word about what is today's theme. Uh, we are focusing on actually the application of data sciences in petroleum engineering. And we'll focus on how data digitalization is playing a key role in and across the industry. And we'll take two perspectives here. One will be from the academia, and then the second will be uh, across the industry. And uh, before I introduce the two distinguished speakers, I'll just say a quick word about myself. I'm Sushma Ban. Um, I have the privilege of being the, um, the co-chair of digital uh, transformation team, which is part of DEETS, the technical section of DSCA. Quite a, a word <laughs> or mouthful, which is data science and engineering analytics. It used to be called MNI before. And uh, about the two speakers, let me just say they are uh, very experienced, very knowledgeable, and now they are in the academia. So they bring a wealth of information and knowledge, both from the industry, from their own experiences, what they have done in consulting and teaching capacity, but now also they are professors. So um, just quickly about them. And again, you can look them up on LinkedIn. Uh, Dr. Birol Dinderuk has had a very uh, splendid and distinguished career at Shell. Uh, he left as the chief scientist. He played a key role in the Resma engineering arena. Specifically from the data perspective, he was uh, one of the leads for pressure volume temperature arena. He has his doctorate from Stanford University. And now he has the privilege of being a professor at University of uh, Houston. Um, I'll let Birol say a few words later on. And same for uh, Dr. Silvio Levescu. He has his uh, doctorate from University of Delaware. He's also uh, recently departed from Baker Hughes as their chief scientist. So both had the chief scientist role. And uh, he is now in the academia as professor at University of uh, Austin, uh, University of uh, Texas at Austin. So uh, again, both of them bring a great wealth of knowledge and experiences. And in addition, both have played a key role in leadership of, of SP as technical directors, uh, Birol and MNI previously, and now Sylvia Levescu is uh, the current technical director. So welcome both of you. Uh, we're gonna make this quite interactive and you know, feel free to chime in when one speaks and another wants to, uh, to comment. So as I said, our theme today is data science and petroleum engineering and its application. And we are looking at it through two lenses, you know, academia and, you know, industry-wide and business application. And um, so really the first thing I want to start with, and I have had my personal experience as CDO in Shell and, um, you know, seen implementation of data being uh, one of the challenges for driving the digital aspiration. Uh, especially in the subsurface and wells arena. So I would ask you, you know, what are the common challenges that have impeded the progress uh, industry-wide and what needs to be addressed? So if you both can share, you know, coming from what challenges we see, you know, Birol or Sylvia, as you want to start. So you want to go first, Dr. Linderuk? Okay, so... The, the challenges uh, that we have is some of them are legacy challenges. Some of them are current cha challenges, I would say. Uh, one of the issues about legacy challenges is that we had uh, historically in the industry more compartmentalized type of a structure. And as a result, data and pieces of data uh, resided, stayed in different places. And for example, if you look at reality, things are more continuous. If I have a well, I get all sorts of data, but at the end of the day, well itself doesn't know actually what teams you have. So there is a natural continuity on these things. So ownership and governance, and also metadata and standards type of issues come into play actually, because if we don't have the right metadata, just up 
from the start. We don't even know how to bin things or categorize categorize things. Of course, standards, et cetera, that changed over the time, it's a learning ex exercise as well. There is not, not necessarily bad, but different standards being used over the time is creating an extra challenge for us as well. So I'll stop with that one and I'll let uh, uh, Silvio perhaps uh, continue with this. So Dr. Levesky, yeah. Sure. So, so first of all, Sushma, thank you very much for inviting us. It's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with uh, with uh, Birol, uh, my predecessor in uh, in the data science uh, technical discipline in SP. Um, so, um, I, I I just want to add to what Birol said. In in addition to all the challenges, you know, with data we have, our industry is notoriously siloed. And so the business models, traditional business models and innovation models in our industry um, don't have the long-term plan for, you know, um, growing data governance or, or, or impactful, you know, data management and data interpretation and, and, and everything that can have an impact in our operations directly. Our industry is notoriously high, you know, capital um, and, and is really reactive, really dynamic to whatever market forces or, or political forces are out there. And so we need a very high level vision mm -hmm. on how actually we are using our data and what value our data is bringing. Thank you. I'll stop here and I'll continue so later. I think, I think that's, the, that's a good combination of, you know, things you have both shared. And again, uh, depending on, you know, what priority, what business problem you're solving, um, you know, it can really vary a lot. I have seen, especially like uh, when, and Birol may remember this, when we were looking at exploration, we were trying to expedite, you know, the, the discovery process from, let's say, or getting the known reserves in 10 to 15 years to half the time. So, you know, as, as business is evolving and we are seeing the focus on renewables and other things, you know, so is our focus on how we uh, focus on data and other things. Mm -hmm. So I, I do want to um, inquire from you, Birol, specifically with your experience and, you know, Shell recently and uh, the leadership in pressure volume temperature area. Um, and also from academia, you know, what is the role of governance? Because oftentimes we, we start doing things at asset level of country level, and then, you know, um, we can proceed and go far further along with uh, either the solutions or what we are trying to do. I mean, you have done extensive work. So can you share examples of some issues and solutions that have worked and specifically, you know, your thoughts on data governance? Yeah, um, that's a... Uh, um interesting questions the question uh, one of the problems is that uh, we have deadline driven discipline specific workflows that no matter how we say integrated we are we are integrated within that workflow basically mm -hmm. we go and get other skills based on the needs and deadline is also trying to compress the time understandably of course but this creates a uh, other complexities for us, for example, that workflow changes over the time. We have integration and disintegration of teams and data does not necessarily move with them. I mean, there is also, as a result, you can even lose the data. Yeah. And uh, the uh, one important thing for us is that um, with respect to other industries, because I always see that Google or Amazon, et cetera, are being uh, given as an example or sales data or these kind of uh, data. But if we um, look at the data that we have, it has longer, maybe the longest shelf life with respect to others. We operate a reservoir a century or three years, five years. And um, we cannot say that this data is not relevant, get rid of it anymore. Like if I have, for example, I don't know, rotary, phone sales numbers today, it may not be relevant today, but I'm sure uh, one can still extract some information in terms of behaviors. But if I have petrophysical data or production data or uh, various things with the mindset of every reservoir has a different DNA, every piece of data has or have um, value for us, I would say for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. So that's one of our challenges, actually, shelf life of it. Dr. Lewis, do you want to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so you know, I, I, I was in the industry with both ExxonMobil and, and Baker Hughes. So, you know, both operator and, and, and services uh, companies. Um, and, and so um, the challenges, I think, are, are very, very complex from the operating, you know, um, company's point of view and then from the services company's point of view. Um, I was saying earlier, you know, that the industry has been very dynamic for decades, right? And and so the innovation has been pushed somehow towards the services companies in the last decade or even more than that, right? Um, and so the challenge would be that the services companies who are actually in in you know providing new technologies, um, they are very siloed themselves. So not only the industry is siloed, but the companies themselves are siloed. And so different product lines have different, you know, workflows or data governance models or, you know, different capabilities, different innovation models. So everything is different. Um, last year, especially, uh, most of these companies, in order to cut costs and to survive um, and adapt for, you know, for growth later, uh, did come up with models to integrate. But, but that's a really... Um, it's, 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 it's driven by need and by cost cutting and not necessarily by the vision of providing value for better innovation models or for you know, more value uh, from innovation um, or from the data itself. And so, and so, as I was saying earlier, I think the only way I see an improvement could happen in our industry is by collaboration by open collaboration within companies, within between companies, um, NSP can play a major role in this. And, and then when we talk about academia as well, I'm, I'm sure we'll touch on this later, that's a completely different you know, area where collaboration is more than needed. It's actually absolutely required for the future of innovation in our industry. Okay. I, I would definitely agree. You know, we have seen it, especially in uh big companies, multinationals, you know, um, you have to work across multiple functions and that's key. So, um, you know, in lines of that, um, um, Sylvia, I'm going to ask you, you know, as we look at, across the value chain, you know, specifically, let's say, well, uh, upstream or oil and gas, we have various uh, functions. We have, you know, exploration, then we have development, wells, um, projects and so forth, you know. Um, and in the past, we used to have very segregated, you know, exploration used to focus on their own arena. And, you know, if you're looking from systems, applications, um, transfer of data, it wasn't so easy. And then you worked with, you know, uh, production or wells. So as we are looking more in, in, you know, the changes coming across the industry, there's a lot more desire to work end to end, you know, more uh, collective, as you said, you know, we want to look at um, more in, integrated fashion. So, you know, since various experts have to collate their decisions, you know, the, the, the decisions which are based on the information data to drive the value add, what do you think is needed, you know, with respect to discipline level integration, you know, and what are the gaps and, you know, what are the opportunity? You touched a little bit and, you know, SP can play a role, but, you know, we, we get very segregated. This is geology, geophysics, reservoir engineering, and so forth. So can you comment a little bit on that, uh, which makes a difference to the value proposition we are trying to get to? Right. So so, um, so from the industry point of view, I, I definitely see that, you know, uh, with Baker Hughes, Schlumberger, Halliburton, so all these companies, and then the operating companies are also starting to pay attention how actually can can engage more collaboration uh, between between different disciplines, right? Um, and that's actually um, uh, being extended to SP as well. So I, I started uh, my, my role, my current PD role uh, in 2020. Um, I, I learned a lot from the role. Um, uh, and, and, and so um, what, what we realize is that um, we created this new data science technical discipline in which actually very few of our members have data science as the primary discipline. Most of our members are reservoir engineers or production engineers, completion engineers, right? Um, and so where exactly you draw the line between technical disciplines, I think it's a very, um, I should say, blurry boundary. 
Um, and, and so that's actually what we are focusing now in SPE. And, and that comes from our members that, you know, uh, bring that, 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 that um, ideas from their companies. So more collaboration is needed. I don't think necessarily going forward, uh, we are reservoir engineers or production engineers or data scientists. I think at the end of the day, all of us are petroleum engineers and or energy engineers, whatever you want to call us. But, but what I'm saying is that instead of being very specialized on a very focused area, from now on, we have to be absolutely um, more generalist than specialist. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent point. You know, you have to have much broader sec uh, spectrum understanding. So, uh, Birol, would you like to share your thoughts? I mean, you have seen uh, how important it is to break the silos, you know, multidisciplinary data integration approach, you know, in WRFM and other areas, well reservoirs, facility management that we saw in Shell. So, uh, from technology or from discipline or, you know, academia, what, what's needed? Can you just uh, share your insights? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, th thank you, Sylvia. I mean, great comments. I, I'm going to... Uh, 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 continue on this thing from that angle as well. Um, one of the things is this, it's uh, the sharing part and breaking the boundaries for the use cases, the extracting the maximum information uh, starts at home actually. That means within the company itself, no matter how the um, how company transforms itself, whether it does it in, 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 in itself or uh, outsources some of these functionalities, but there has to be a continuity on it. I look at this problem, uh, like analog problem is like this. Uh, within the, let's think about within the company. Uh, we have a, a puzzle, everybody has little pieces and everybody thinks that they have the critical piece of the puzzle. Let's say at the, at the end of the day, um, it's, a, it's a, somebody's picture, let's say, the outcome of the puzzle. Well, uh, somebody who might be holding the piece that reflects the, you know, represents the eye. When, they, when you look at it, you don't know if it's an eye or not, unless you uh, have other pieces from other people. But in the meantime, everybody thinks that they have the key piece actually. So we need to, um, we need to first of all, change that mindset. I think the, the psychological part of it or the culture part of it is the biggest thing actually for the collective learning to maximize uh, the the outcome because why are why are we doing um, what what's the what's the big deal about data and if you look at it there are a couple of key points I mean it's not necessarily limited to this but uh, one of them is reduce uncertainty maximum learning out of it basically mm -hmm. safety of course and save time so they all can be converted into a dollar value and uh, but of course in the meantime data is an asset as well. I'm not saying we should all put it in one box and everybody can pick it as well. So there's a push and pull type of thing here. When we bring it to company levels now, from now from home to a company level, uh, multiple companies, there needs to be some kind of a cooperation in that level that everybody benefits. It. So, uh, I mean, I don't know what the formula is, but some elements of it even starts with our publications. I see even in uh, various journals, SP or non-SP, people talk about oil, they don't even write what the API is. Right. So we can solve that problem in-house, first of all, within our domain. So um, I, I think the discussion can go on and on, but I'll uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> leave no, I it. think that's, that's uh, and I'm, I'm glad you're pointing out because, you know, you are talking about data and information as an asset. And um, that's kind of key because though um, you cannot just use it in its raw form. You have to, you know, analyze it and extract value out of it as you're talking. But, be, you know, the ownership that comes from the experts, but also from the top leadership and the companies, I think that has to be focused uh, more and more, because that's where we see that um, we try to deploy the best architecture, technology, and then uh, things fail. And I often see, you know, we have been talking about OSDU and other things. So I think you you make a very good point, uh, uh, Birol, about, you know, the maximizing the value. So in addition to that, if both of you can talk a little bit about, you know, uh, we, we start with pilots, we do things at the asset level, country level, you know, we have done things as you saw the journey of PVT, or you might have done things through Baker Hughes, you know, um, 
where we find things do not um, succeed is most often we have a non-homogeneous data landscape and uh, it's about the scalability. So what, what can drive, you know, you know, we come and we do some good digital pilots or we get initiatives done in one or two assets, but then when you try to do it at the global bigger scale, especially for multinational and you're trying to optimize costs, um, what, how do we go about it? Can you share some insights, you know, Sylvia, if you want to go first and then Birol, if you want to add something from PVT experience. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sushma. So um, I, 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 I truly believe that the data itself, you know, it's an asset, but, but the value comes actually from decisions we can reach through that data. Um, and, so, and so somewhere in between, the value proposition is lost. We either have, you know, the data scientists or, you know, um, uh, other kind of, you know, professionals who are really, really looking only at the data and they try to make a case about how important that data is. And on the other hand, you have the, the, the regular operational, you know, professionals who don't have the data science background and they don't really understand the data science necessarily and they, they don't have the capacity to go into the details of, you know, of all the coding and you know all the statistics and analytics and so on and so forth and so and so somewhere in between we need actually to understand that the value proposition has to be articulated very very simply and very very uh, effectively right and and that comes actually even now i can talk about academia as well so we have you know coming from the industry i i just joined the academia and i see how much positive energy that the, the students have here. It's, it's incredible. And, and so I'm looking at them and I know they are going to our industries. They will be the next you know, generation of professionals in the oil and gas industry. And, and so they are focusing really, really hard on all kinds of data science algorithms, right? They don't have that capacity to understand the value of what they are doing. And so, is very, very important to have great mentoring from the industry to our graduate students to teach them actually what they can do with the data, what, what value actually that data has for our industry. And so somehow we need to work together, again, collaborative, about articulating the value of data in our industry and make sure, making sure that we have the right skill set in teams, in collaborative uh, you know, environments to provide that value. No, I think that that's a great point because we have to get not only our existing talent, but our um, upcoming talent. And I think we'll, we'll come back to the, the talent question again. Um, thanks for that. Um, I, I want to shift to the, the challenge that was, you know, um, touched upon Birol initially when you mentioned the standards or lack of standards. So what can uh, academia or companies, you know, do to address this? Do you think it is still needed? I mean, we, we struggled with some and uh, more and more as we are seeing, you know, companies are working uh, as joint ventures or there's more um, cross company, you know, cross functional collaboration. Can you comment a little bit on the need for that? Do we need it? Um, how can we go about and role of SP academia and so forth? Yeah, um, I'm going to start with adding excellent point to that uh, Silvio made it just a, you know, one liner on it. Uh, if people know that the asset value of the data that let's say we are sitting on, the, if the value that is extracted is orders of magnitude mm -hmm. is bigger than the intrinsic value of the data, right. I wonder how the behaviors would be actually. I think that's an important point actually. Silvio made an excellent point on it. So coming back to the question, uh, sorry about that. Uh, metadata and, and the standards and, and executing them. Of course, uh, the, the problem with that thing is that it's again uh, related to culture. One of them is this, we like to differentiate ourselves actually, like although there's a standard, there are certain standards you go to a, let's say a laboratory, they say, well, standard is this, but we modified it because it's better. Yeah. Because it's a product differentiation is forcing them in a competitive landscape. However, if I put these data together from different shops, especially uh, if you look at the time aspect of it, these things change over the time as well, then how am I gonna make sense out of it? Because 
by the nature of our industry, sp uh, data, direct data being sparse because it comes from wells, and we face with inversion problems. Basically, we observe something and we try to figure out why did it happen, right? So um, that what they do in this non-standard way shadows or creates extra complexities and uncertainty for our interpretation. That's one of the biggest issues. So we need to collectively develop a culture that we need to stick it in some way. And if you have alternative solutions, it should be the second line. Uh, I'm not denying there is doing something twice as a cost implications. I'm not denying it. But if data is important for you, that's a small price to pay because okay. the value that Silvio over here uh, highlighted is going to be the key driver. Uh, also, the pushing the standards from the user's point of view, uh, the, the ones who digest the data, so to speak, they may also like the same thing with different flavors on it or toppings, so as to speak, actually, if I was to make it uh, simple. So they also offset the standards in a way with their demands. So the, and when we bring the complexity of the shelf life, the extended shelf life of the data that we have by the nature of our business, it creates even uh, more uh, time dependent complexities if you look forward actually, because what happens if I do something today, 10 years, 20 years ago, people are gonna, what are they gonna say? Especially if the metadata for those, those processes are not written clearly. Right, right, no, absolutely. I think, uh, and again, uh, you know, as you're sharing these points, you're, you're um, focusing on some of the underpinning challenges that you mentioned in the beginning. They have to be sort of addressed. Um, um, anything else you would like to share about specifically about the data, you know, the standard side? I mean, I know you have talked, for example, uh, with leaders in OSDU arena, uh, Silvio. Any anything on the the value of standardization and uh, what's needed or what's going on? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, so bureau, excellent comments. Uh, I I would just like to add uh, uh, one comment I made in JPT last year in my in my annual uh, uh, article. Uh, of technical directors. Um, so, you know, the, the, the tech industry after the 2000, you know, crash um, came up with a very different business model of open source. And, and, and after that, you know, we created these giants uh, that are today the, the current tech companies. Um, in our industry, actually, we have, you know, our operations, we have our data, we have, you know, our competitors, we have national oil companies, we have international oil companies. It's a very different business model than the tech industry. However, um, for us, what I still see is that in terms of standardization, we are still trying to protect our data in a non-open source way. And, and, and so data itself still is seen as an asset. Um, and we are not even talking about the decisions we are reaching from data, but, but uh, data is still seen as a competitive advantage in our industry. And so um, we shouldn't be seen as another tech industry or we shouldn't see uh, be seen like, uh, you know, we can just apply whatever is happening in the tech industry. We have a very, very different business model and different needs and different requirements, right? So, so what I'm saying is that um, within SPE, my plan is for the next, you know, 18 months or so um, uh, of my, you know, uh, technical directorship, I would like to start having a series of forums um, around the world with, with technical experts around the world. Um, I want them to come together and to discuss actually what we are doing, how we are doing, and what can we do better than we have ever done before. I think this kind of open collaboration doesn't necessarily mean um, open source you know, data or, or, or workflows, but it does mean that actually we need to come up with different models of collaborations, even if we don't share our data. But standardization, that's really important for our industry. That will actually um, make a lot of things much easier in terms of, you know, being more effective as an industry, more efficient. So just to um, dig a little further, so what, you know, what is, what is the role you find of, you know, vendors, service providers, and others, you know, because obviously, you know, Birol said um, the company itself has to have that ownership and, 
you know, sort of get their own house in order. Um, and, and sometimes we see that we go for these huge monolithic big solutions that we want to pan across the world and takes multiple years and sometimes it doesn't work. So are we, should we piecemeal some of these things and, you know, get small companies to work with us? Um, it, or, it, you know, definitely SP is a good platform also, but I just want to hear, you know, how, how can one go about it? You know, definitely ac academia also has a role. So... It, it, it's all about vision. So as long as, you know, we don't look from, you know, from above to see actually what we can do with our data and how we can collaborate using data, um, I don't think we are going to, to, you know, change our business models as they are now. Um, and, and so that's, that's absolutely normal because, you know, you will always have companies who will try actually to monetize data, right? I mean, that's absolutely fine. But, but that's not necessarily helping our industry unlock the potential of, you know, the value of data we are getting. Right. No, I think, I think that makes sense. So lastly, since both of you are, um, you know, working in academia, you know, we, we definitely see there's a shift in the last four or five years. There's more focus on digital and data. Um, and, you know, as students or talent that we have existing focuses on some of these specialized areas, you know, we said that's probably not need needed, you know, geology, geophysics, reservoir engineering. Um, how should the future be, you know, with respect to our existing, uh, you know, the resources we have in the company, but also the talent that's coming, you know, uh, should data science be something that's sort of mandated across, you know, should they be open about uh, picking certain things? You know, I was recently talking to Rice University students also, and the need for, you know, being a lot more um, curious and learning things. So what are your thoughts, you know, how should the upcoming petroleum engineering or just the, the people who join the industry uh, be doing with respect to DSCA or, you know, just data sciences? What, what are your suggestions and advice? Do you, you want to go first and then we roll? Yeah. Sure, sure, no problem. Um, so, so here at UT, actually, um, as I said, there is so much positive energy among students. Uh, I see that uh, the uh, data science classes we have, they are probably the most attended. Um, they are always full. So students definitely want to learn and they feel that data science is a topic that is needed no matter what. And, and that I think it's a great, great uh, skill to have no matter you know what kind of disciplines they are going to choose for their careers um, and so the more mix of of technical disciplines we have with data science i think is going to help our industry but again what i said um, is still is still very valid um, even if our students all of them are interested in data science i think they need that mentorship to uh, to show them the value of, of data. Um, so, so just, you know, because they know how to code or because they know how to, you know, manage data, you know, big data, that doesn't mean that they understand actually the values they can bring. And so they need that mentorship from the industry. And I think it's a two way street here. I think the industry has a very important role in making sure that the future talent coming in our industry has the right skill set and, and knowledge you know, to, to carry the flag uh, uh, further. All right, thanks uh, for that, Silvio. Uh, Birol, and I know you, you were very hands-on when, when, when apps and different things were done. Um, so what are your comments for people who are, you know, with mid-term mid careers and those who are coming, uh, coming in the industry now? Thank you, Silvio, that ex excellent point uh, over here. Uh, to add to that, <clears throat> in taking this dimension. Um, uh, one of the issue over here is that, is it, can I achieve everything? Just give me the data, I'll tell you what it is. So content is going to be the competitive advantage over here in many ways, actually, from using an extraction of information point of view, as well as somebody has to put an order or generate the data at some point. So. You know, we cannot say there exists a person that generates the data for me. Uh, that person, there exists statement requires a qualified person. Mm -hmm. 
mm. uh, armed with the knowledge, basically. Because if, if you look at the data from philosophical point of view, every piece of data is a piece of experience. And when you put them all together, you extract the experience out of them. And that's turned into a value, actually. Because mm. if you see something all the, over and over, that means you know, it's repeated. It has statistical uh, significance or meaning. So having said that, it's not only knowing a particular highlighted uh, computer language. At some point, it's going to be a commodity. Mm -hmm. But what your competitive advantage is going to come from your content and ability to execute. Show me the results. That's the bottom line at the end of the day. Absolutely. So, um, well, I think this has been excellent and we could go for a very long time and many of the things. So let me just sort of recap some of the things we touched on. And I think the first thing that was pointed out, let's look at, you know, the problem, the challenges we are trying to find, you know, how do we prioritize for that number two and understand the price, the value, you know, what are we going after? So then we can sort of look at um, some of the key elements that we talked about, which is more looking at our workflows, our value chain end to end. Uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, how silos and um, dismantling them is key. And so integration of data, the systems becomes very important. And one of the key points that was brought up that behaviors are very key, you know, that's at the people ownership level. It's how we manage things. How do we leverage? And lastly, you know, uh, focus on our talent, whether it's existing and how do we mentor? How do we bring our uh, upcoming talent so we can really make a difference. Um, I know there were many other points that were raised. So thank you for these key points. I want to check if there are any final comments from both of you. Any final remarks that I might have not recapped? Anything uh, else that comes to your mind? I, I will <clears throat> say uh, three things uh, at the end of the day. One is uh, just to highlight a uh, recap culture, collaboration, mm -hmm and competitive advantage. These three C's actually are the key for me. Competitive advantage is a big box, uh, knowledge, uh, et cetera, excess. I mean, I'm not gonna go into details, but those three C's are very, very important. important. And uh, as, a, as a also final note, uh, thank you very much for your kind invitation and also organizing this and great to see my colleagues and friends here as well. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Dr. Barrow. Thank you. And, and, and Silvio? And, and uh, um, yeah, um, I, I would like just to say uh, after excellent comments, uh, and Birol, thank you very much for uh, for everything you said. I'm, I'm really, really uh, uh, happy to hear, you know, your, your final comments, especially. Um, I, um, I would like to say that our industry has a bright future, no matter, you know, how much negative is out there. Um, data, is going to be probably one of the pillars of our industry being surviving and thriving in the future. And how actually we are going to use it, how we are going to use our digital tools, how are we going to use our business models are going to be very, very important for whatever is going to happen in the next decades. And so the skill sets that you know the professionals in our industry have to have it, it, it's a mixture between, you know, uh, data driven and, and physics driven um, thinking. And, and so that's really important. I think SP is going to play a significant role as well in the future. And so I would like to stress one more time. I want, I'm helping everybody in the industry to come and collaborate within SP for the, for the you know, better future of our industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with that, I want to say many thanks to both of you, Dr. Birol Dindarak and Dr. Silvio Levescu. Um, this was very insightful, uh, very good tips and thoughts. And if anybody wants to reach out, you know, they can um, access you through LinkedIn and, um, you know, your well-known university professors. But also, I want to say uh, thank you for your leadership of SPE and DSCA. It has been uh, personally very inspiring and uh, valuable to me and many, many of us who are in these technical arenas. So again, thank you very much. We look forward to comments from our audience later on. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.